Hey guys, so today I want to go over using Kismet. In previous videos and tutorials, I covered how to get started with the Wi-Fi on Kismet, how to set your card into monitor mode, and also how to add that device into Kismet. And with Kismet, the interface is actually pretty straightforward. Today we're going over the SDR part, so if you have an RTL SDR, go ahead and get that out and plug it into your computer. I'm also going to be talking about how to install the RTL SDR. I covered this earlier on the Pine Phone with a demonstration of using SDR on the Pine Phone. I do recommend this kit from RTL-SDR.com. Here it is. In fact, if you go to this site right here you can grab this kit it has everything you need including a high quality RTR RTL SDR dongle as well as a dipole uh, resizable antenna and different types of mounts for that antenna it's a great kit to get because it'll give you a variety of lengths for your dipole so to get started first I've plugged in my RTL SDR and next we can take a quick look over at the RTL-SDR.com installing guide and it's pretty easy to do let's go ahead and open a terminal arch based Linux we would do pacman we would search for RTL-SDR and what comes back it shows a variety of different things we're gonna wanna install this as you can see what this is is a driver for the Realtek RTL SDR and if you aren't familiar RTL dash SDR is actually originally for receiving television but we're also gonna blacklist the television based driver in order to get it working for a software defined radio purpose so the first thing I'm gonna do now if you're on Debian you would do apt install RTL SDR but since I'm on Endeavor OS I'm going to do Pac-Man and then I'll do RTL SDR that's going to install the driver we need and once we do that next thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and blacklist the driver we'll go ahead and take and copy and paste this simple command right here which you can find on that site and then by using sudo we can paste that command and now we have blacklisted the problematic driver the DVB USB RTL 28XXU. Now that that's blacklisted, we should be able to get started with our RTL SDR. Of course, you're going to want to make sure you have Kismet, and we're going to take a look at watching plane flights with ADSB. You can also check out things like pick up the meter readings and everything. In fact, one person was reported to have caught his company cheating him by using an RTL SDR to monitor the actual readings and he was being overbilled. He was able to correct that by using an RTL SDR. We're going to make sure we have Kismet and you can either use the apt command for your Debian based distribution or for an Arch based distribution you would then look it up using this command. As you can see I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed you can do apt install Kismet or for Arch based Pac-Man capital S Kismet and that will install it for you. Now once we have Kismet installed all we'll need to do is run Kismet and then what I'm going to do is demonize which is going to send it into the background and allow it to run you know no matter what else happens it won't stop until we kill it. So we'll go ahead and do that starting it up now it's running in the background and what I can do if I'd like to use my Wi-Fi card I can do airmon ng check kill we see is it kills the processes that could interfere with what we're trying to do with the Wi-Fi end we can run both the RTL SDR and the Wi-Fi sniffing all at the same time and if you have Bluetooth you can enable that and also activate that right inside the Kismet interface now that we have Kismet started we should put our card into monitor mode start and then my card and as you can see my Aetheros card is now in monitor mode. What we're going to do is we'll have to open up a web browser and we will do that. We will go to our IP address, which is, of course, localhost 2501 for the port. 
Next, we're going to enter our username and password. Your first time running Kismet, you'll set a username and password. I already have mine, so I know what I'm going to enter. Now that I'm in Kismet, the next thing I'm going to want to do in order to take advantage of both the Wi-Fi and the RTL SDR is I'm going to go up here to the top left hand side. Then I'm going to go to data sources. At this point it's going to find available devices and what we can see here is we have multiple options for our SDR. Since I have installed the drivers, I blacklisted the problematic driver. What I can do if I want to monitor planes flying in my area you should check into your local laws, but I know for those in the U.S. it is completely legal to listen to radio transmissions. So you shouldn't have any problems there, but make sure you never attempt to interfere with anything. Kismet is a passive program, so it's not going to interfere with anyone's wireless or any other types of radio transmissions. And that's an important thing to note. So check into your local regulations, then you can get started with this. So I'm going to go to enable device. It's going to enable it for plane watching and flights. So then I'll go to my Wi-Fi, which is now in monitor mode. So instead of being WLAN0, it's now WLAN0 MON, short for monitor mode. I'm going to go ahead and enable this source as well. Now I have everything going. I can see all of the different wireless devices in my area. It collects all of them as it goes. And then also I can go to the ADSB Live and then I can actually monitor live flights right now. So as you can see, they will come up. Of course, I have to blur this because I don't want to give away sensitive information. And on your screen, you will see something similar to the image that I'm showing now. You'll also get a pattern of the different flights. And another tip for you is if you don't have an RTL SDR, you can still use something like flightaware.com to monitor the flights in your area. And in fact, you can gather additional information on some of these planes, some of their flight paths, some of their flight history on the website flightaware.com. And so you'll be able to note all of this once you've gone through this process. And it's really quick to get started. And that's one thing that makes Kismet such a wonderful tool is there really isn't a lot of work involved getting it going. And there's so much you can discover while using Kismet. You can also go in and then change some of your settings as well to change the highlighting in order to better recognize different things. So for instance, you can actually detect body cams. You can also detect different types of devices. Drones are included in this. Kismet comes with different uh, metadata that will be found in drones, such as DJI, for instance. And you can also modify some of the files for Kismet to detect other things on your own. And what I like to do is add some colors to some of this. So if I want to see, you know, body cams as blue, I'll do that. You can enable it by simply going like this. And then when you hit Save Changes, you'll notice it right away. And then if you want to see what handshakes are, so for instance, if you have a device that keeps getting disconnected, the Wi-Fi handshake will actually be leaked over the open air. And Kismet actually collects these. Of course, if it's not your network, do not save a handshake and do not collect a handshake. You should definitely look into your local regulations and never use de-authentication against any devices. That is something that I believe is universally uh, a law against that. That's actually interfering with something. And so with de-authentication, what's nice about Kismet is it actually will detect the different attacks on your own network, such as the de-authentication attacks. Now I can't show everything on here as mentioned because of the fact that it will give away sensitive information. But I think you get the idea and I encourage you to check out the earlier tutorials. This one for instance shows you how to administrate Kismet from any smartphone using local area network using a access point. And we can go back over to our data sources and then we can check out this and turn off 
the actual flight pattern thing. So we can go to close this. And once we close that, we'll then be able to enable some of the other detection, such as the RTL AMR. So this will allow us to detect entirely different devices. And as you can see, there's a variety of different things detected with my ADSB from earlier. So all this stays in the logs. You can also take a look at your alerts. If you have any deauthentication attacks, say someone is trying to crack into your Wi-Fi network, a deauthentication attack is pretty common. And this Kismet will allow you to detect those as well, as well as deauthentication attacks that are against others. So you'll be able to detect all of the deauthentication attacks in the area. That is a huge sign that someone is probably trying to crack into your wireless network. You may want to use Kismet as a network detection for attacks. Now, as you can see, I actually have now detected a water meter. And through this, I'm able to read that meter. And there's another one detected as well now. And you can change over between your data sources to detect your you know, water meters, things like that, different IoT devices as well. And you can then re-enable your RTL ADSB anytime you want to track the flights that are going over you. And we're going to be talking more about radio in the future, but I wanted to get everyone started with Kismet because I think Kismet is just a great place to start. If you just got yourself an RTL SDR, check out Kismet. It's one of my favorite tools. It's passive, is not going to threaten any of the other radio devices in your area. You can organize everything and you can list devices by their type as well or just by the data source themselves. So there's so many different things you can do here. You can also detect if your own devices are getting disconnected frequently, which will lead you to realize which ones may need to be closer to the router. That will provide less of those handshakes being leaked over the open air with less disconnects. So that's what I have today, guys. Wanted to share that with you guys, how to get started with it. Of course, unfortunately, I can't share the personal information on my area. Sensitive information basically would show my own house, and I don't really want to share that with the world at the moment. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the blog, and if you want to support there, you can always go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech, or you can just go over and read all of the public posts, which is pretty much all of them at buymeacoffee.com slash politictech slash posts. Pretty much everything is public there. Appreciate everyone who takes the time to follow, to share these videos, subscribe, and I will be back later with more on how to protect your privacy, security, and Linux.